Hello there everybody and welcome back. It's another Tuesday Teaching Tips with me, Sally Cathcart. I don't know where the time goes to, but all of a sudden it's Tuesday again. It's flying past, isn't it? Today though, I just want to get a little bit nerdy and a little bit creative with how we use our technical names. Now this has come out of our curiosity box for April where we're looking at how to teach theory in a, a musically meaningful kind of way. Now technical names, you know what I mean, tonic, dominant, subdominant, etc, etc. However, if we talk about them like this as technical names, what we're doing is we're divorcing them from their function. And it's the function of the notes that is absolutely crucial to this. So I want to talk today and ex uh, show a couple of examples for these two. The tonic and the dominant note, the home and away note, because this is where I think it all begins. Now, with the tonic, let's think about that word tonic. It's actually taken from this word, tonos. And I'm not sure whether my screen is the right way around. I didn't change it, so I am probably backwards, aren't I, at the moment. I'm just going to, I can do that. I'm clever enough. I'm just going to reverse my screen and see if I can do it. There we go. That's better. Now I should be the right way around. And you should be able to read tonos. And that's a Greek word. And you think we have tonic, tonality, tone, whole tone, semitone. All those words are related to that word tonos. And we can only talk about the function and an example the function of the notes as in tonic and dominant if you are in a tone if you have a tonal center if it has a tonality in the key of c in the mode of d dorian or whatever it's got to be tonal music atonal music well it says it on the tin doesn't it so Tonic is the home note, it's the resting note, as Edwin Gordon calls it, and I, the resting tone, I love that idea of it comes to rest on that. Um, and it's the note to which all the other notes in a tonal piece of music, its function is to pull everything back down. I don't quite know what note I'm singing. I thought it might be a C. Okay, so little games you can play right from the beginning. Beginners and elementary can do this, and I'd like you to be... Uh, my student for the moment. I'm going to sing a song. You'll know it. I'd like you to sing the last note, which is the resting tone. Okay, here we go. Happy birthday. I've just given you the wrong one though. Mm, I'm not going to start too low, too low, but you have to put in the resting tone at the end. I'm starting on the dominant. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear everyone. Happy birthday to you. I was having lots of fun with my students last week doing this with them and just handing over. And of course, they can all go, you. Then I'd say to them, oh, mm, can you hum that note? Can you go and find it on your piano? Mm, I've gone flat, but there we go. And again, that's quite good for them to be able to listen, hear a, hear a note, hear a pitch and find it on the piano. There's one. What about this one? This one has got a different resting tone this time. Mm, different tonic. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. That is the tonic. Can you find it on the piano? And then they go and find it there. Or I might change the pitch. I might say, mm, here it is again. Can you find the tonic at the end? Sing it first. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you Ah, there's the tonic. Oh, I know I did go a bit higher. I did go to G. I thought it was a bit high. Okay, so that's a really lovely way of just introducing that idea of the home note of the tonic as being the resting tone. Now the other one to get them going with is the dominant, and I'm going to go back to C as the tonic. So. Tonic is home, away to the dominant and back home again. So the dominant note is the note that goes away. It's the note that most often pulls us away from the tonic and it often helps us to move back from the dominant, from the tonic, sorry. 
So when I talk about Home and Away, and I, I think I first came across this with Forrest Guinea, and in his pattern play, he talks about vacation, about going away. And it's not always to the dominant, but it is definitely to give a different flavour and to give a different feel to it. So the dominant is the away note. It's where we like to go on holiday, we like to go somewhere different, but actually we always like to return back home to our safety and security. So why is the dominant note called the dominant note? That's a good question, isn't it? If you go to your piano, you can try this out at home later and you, you'll know how to do this and I'm sure you've shown your students, but I'm just gonna put down the tonic of uh, the triad of C major like this. I'm gonna put it down silently so you can't hear it. Then I'm gonna play a very loud low C here. I don't know whether you can hear. This is the note that's coming through and that is the dominant note and it does what it says on tin again it is the dominant note that emerges from the harmonic series so dominant note it pulls us away now if you're doing scales with intermediate students it's really useful for them to recognize and have fun with these tonic and dominant because remember they really help us to understand the function of the notes and within the key. So something my friend Sharon did last week um, was to have a lot of fun with standing up and sitting down. Um, I've done it in the past with clapping and clicking, but I'm gonna do her version because she said she didn't mind me showing this. So we're gonna sing the scale of C major, let's say. Actually, we could just say it. We're gonna say the letter names. We don't have to sing everything. We're gonna say the letter names. When we say the tonic, we're gonna be sitting down. When we say the dominant, we're gonna stand up but we're using the letter name. So it's gonna go like this. Off I go. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. B, A, G, F, E, D, C. And I'm standing up and sitting down on the notes that are the tonic and the dominant. Of course, C major is easy. Let's try a harder one. Should we try A major? See if you can say and stand up and sit down on A major. So degrees for um, saying the letter names. Off we go. A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, A, G sharp, F sharp, E, D, C sharp, B, A. Well, that's a lot of fun. And just the right kind of thing to do for two minutes or three minutes in a lesson while uh, to, to wake the student up, maybe halfway through it. The other version I've done is to clap. So you clap on a tonic and click on the dominant. So let's choose a different key. Let's go for a flat key, shall we? D flat major, Ooh, that's gonna be a bit tricky. Clapping, clicking. Off we go. D flat, E flat, F, G flat, A flat, B flat, C, D flat, C, B flat, A flat, G flat, F, E flat, D flat. I'm not sure I got that right or not. However, it was fun in the trying. So, a couple of fun games that you can play with your students. Um, over in the curiosity box, as I said, for April, we've been looking at, at theory, lots of technical names and stuff like that. More ideas, lovely sheets here for technical names, overview, as well as lots of helpful hints and activities. Thank you all so much for watching. Hope you have fun. Remember, technical names, it's about the function of the note within a tonality. Happy teaching. Bye-bye for now. Uh, just got to get myself out and stop. Oop. Now I can't stop. Let's just see how do I finish this.